Act One of Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. Cast of Characters Duke Orsino, read by Algie Pug. Curio, read by Charlotte Duckett. Valentine, read by Nathaniel W. C. Higgins. Viola, read by Elizabeth Clatt. A Sea Captain, read by Alan Matchstone. Sir Toby Belch, read by Bruce Peary. Maria, read by Amanda Friday. Sir Andrew Aguecheek, read by M. B. Clown, read by Chris Marcellus. Olivia, read by Ariel Lipshaw. Malvolio, read by Timothy Ferguson. Antonio, read by ernst patinama sebastian read by capricia page fabian read by alison walker elders servant priest read by grace garrett first officer read by charlotte duckett the second officer read by nathaniel w c higgins narrator read by tiffany halla colonna act one scene one Duke Orsino's Palace. Enter Duke Orsino, Curio, and other lords. Musicians attending. If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that, surfeiting, the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again. It had a dying fall. Oh! It came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odour. Enough, no more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. O oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that, notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as the sea, naught enters there of what validity and pitch soe'er but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute so full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical will you go hunt my lord what curio the hat why so i do the noblest that i have oh when mine eyes did see olivia first Methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, And my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, Ere since pursue me. Enter Valentine. How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, But from her handmaid do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, Shall not behold her face at ample view like a cloister she will veil it walk and water once a day her chamber round with eye offending brine all this to season a brother's dead love which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance oh she that hath a heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother how will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her when liver brain and heart these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled her sweet perfections with one self king away before me to sweet beds of flowers love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers exeunt scene two the sea coast enter viola a captain and sailors what country friends is this this is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, sailors? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother! And so perchance may he be. True, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself after our ship did split when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our driving boat i saw your brother most provident in peril bind himself 
courage and hope both teaching him the practice to a strong mast that lived upon the sea where like orion on the dolphin's back i saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as i could see for saying so there's gold mine own escape unfoldeth to my hope whereto thy speech serves for authority the like of him knowest thou this country ay madam well for i was bred and born not three hours travel from this very place who governs here a noble duke in nature as in name what is his name orsino orsino i have heard my father name him he was a bachelor then and so is now or was so very late for but a month ago i went from hence and then twas fresh in murmur as you know what great ones do the less will prattle of that he did seek the love of fair olivia what's she a virtuous maid the daughter of a count that died some twelve months since then leaving her in the protection of his son her brother who shortly also died for whose dear love they say she hath abjured the company and sight of men oh that i served that lady and might not be delivered to the world till i had made mine own occasion mellow what my estate is that were hard to compass because she will admit no kind of suit no not the duke's there is a fair behaviour in thee captain and though that nature with a beauteous wall doth oft close in pollution yet of thee i will believe thou hast a mind that suits with this thy fair and outward character i prithee and i'll pay thee bounteously conceal me what i am and be my aid for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent i'll serve this duke thou shalt present me as an eunuch to him it may be worth thy pains for i can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service what else may hap to time i will commit only shape thou thy silence to my wit be you his eunuch and your mute i'll be when my tongue blabs then let mine eyes not see i thank thee lead me on exeunt scene three olivia's house enter sir toby belch and maria what a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus i am sure cares an enemy to life by my troth sir toby you must come in earlier o nights your cousin my lady takes great exceptions to your ill hours why well, let her accept before accepted ay but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order confine i'll confine myself no finer than i am these clothes are good enough to drink in and so be these boots too and they be not let them hang themselves in their own straps that quaffing and drinking will undo you i heard my lady talk of it yesterday and of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer who sir andrew aguecheek ay he he's as tall a man as any's in illyria what's that to the purpose why he has three thousand ducats a year ay but he'll have but a year in all these ducats he's a very fool and a prodigal fie that you'll say so he plays with the viola gamboys and speaks three or four languages word for word without book and hath all the good gifts of nature he hath indeed almost natural for besides that he's a fool he's a great quarreller and but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarrelling tis thought among the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave by this hand they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him who are they they that add moreover he's drunk nightly in your company with drinking health to my niece i'll drink to her as long as there is a passage in my throat and drink in illyria he's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece till his brains turn o' the toe like a parish top what wench castiliano volgo for here comes sir andrew Aguface. enter sir andrew sir toby belch how now sir toby belch sweet sir andrew bless you fair shrew and you too sir a cost sir andrew a cost was that my niece's chambermaid oh, good mistress a cost i desire better acquaintance my name is mary sir 
good mistress marry a cost you mistake knight a cost is front her board her woo her assail her by my troth i would not undertake her in this company is that the meaning of a cost fare you well gentlemen and now let part so sir andrew would thou mightst never draw sword again and you part so mistress i would i might never draw sword again fair lady do you think you are fools in hand sir i have not you by the hand marry but you shall have and here is my hand now sir thought is free i pray you bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink wherefore sweetheart what's your m metaphor it's dry sir why i i think so but i am not such an ass but i can keep my hand dry but what's your jest a dry jest sir are you full of them ay sir i have them at my fingers ends mary now i let go your hand i am barren exit o oh, knight thou lackst a cup of canary when did i see thee so put down never in your life i think unless you see canary put me down i think sometimes i have no more wit than a christian or an ordinary man has but i am a great eater of beef and i believe it does harm to my wit no question and i thought that i'd forswear it i'll ride home to-morrow sir toby pourquoi my dear knight what is pourquoi do or not do i would i had bestowed that time in the tongues that i have in fencing dancing and bear-baiting oh had i but followed the arts then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair why would that have mended my hair pass question for thou seest it will not curl by nature but it becomes me well enough does not excellent it hangs like flax on a distaff and i hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off faith i'll home to-morrow sir toby your niece will not be seen or if she be it's four to one shall none of me the count himself here hard by woos her she'll none of the count she'll not match above her degree neither in estate years nor wit i have heard her swear it tut there's life in it man i'll stay a month longer i am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world i delight in masks and revels sometimes altogether art thou good at these kickshawses knight as any man in illyria whatsoever he be under the degree of my betters and yet i will not compare with an old man what is thy excellence in a galliard knight faith i can cut a caper and i can cut the mutton to it and i think i have the back trick simply as strong as any man in illyria wherefore are these things hid wherefore have these gifts a curtain before em are they like to take dust like mr small's picture why dost thou not go to church in a galliard and come home in a coranto my very walk should be a jig i would not so much as make water but in a syncopace what dost thou mean is it a world to hide virtues in i did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg it was formed under the star of a galliard or oh, i tis strong and it does indifferent well in a flame-coloured stock shall we set about some revels what shall we do else were we not born under taurus taurus that sides and heart no sir it is legs and thighs let me see the caper ha higher <laughs> excellent exeunt scene four duke orsino's palace enter valentine and viola in man's attire if the duke continue these favours towards you cesario you are like to be much advanced he hath known you but three days and already you are no stranger you either fear his humour or my negligence that you call in question the continuance of his love is he inconstant sir in his favours no believe me i thank you here comes the count enter duke orsino curio and attendants who saw cesario ho on your attendance my lord here stand you a while aloof cesario thou know'st no less but all i have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul 
therefore good youth address thy gate unto her be not denied access stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience sure my noble lord if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke she never will admit me be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return say i do speak with her my lord what then oh then unfold the passion of my love surprise her with discourse of my dear faith it shall become thee well to act my woes she will attend it better in thy youth than in annuncios of more grave aspect i think not so my lord dear lad believe it for they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ shrill and sound and all that is semblative a woman's part i know thy constellation is right apt for this affair some four or five attend him all if you will for i myself am best when least in company prosper well in this and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine i'll do my best to woo your lady aside yet a barful strife whoe'er i woo myself would be his wife exeunt scene five olivia's house enter maria and clown nay either tell me where thou hast been or i will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse my lady will hang thee for thy absence let her hang me he that is well hanged in this world needs to fear no colours make that good he shall see none to fear a good lenten answer i can tell thee where that saying was born of i fear no colours where good mistress mary in the wars and that may you be bold to say in your foolery well god give them wisdom that have it and those that are fools let them use their talents yet you will be hanged for being so long absent or to be turned away is not that as good as a hanging to you many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage and as for turning away let summer bear it out you are resolute then not so neither but i am resolved on two points that if one break the other will hold or if both break your gaskins fall <sighs> apt in good faith very apt well go thy way if sir toby would leave drinking thou wert as witty a piece of eve's flesh as any in illyria peace you rogue no more o that here comes my lady make your excuse wisely you were best exit would not be thy will put me in good fooling those wits that think they have thee do oft prove fools and i that am sure i lack thee may pass for a wise man for what says quinopolis better a witty fool than a foolish wit enter olivia with malvolio god bless thee lady take the fool away do you not hear fellows take away the lady go to you're a dry fool i'll know more of you besides you grow dishonest two faults madonna that drink and good counsel will amend forgive the dry fool drink then is the fool not dry bid the dishonest man mend himself if he mend he is no longer dishonest if he cannot let the botch amend him anything that's mended is but patched virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin and sin that amends is but patched with virtue if that the simple syllogism will serve so if it will not what remedy as there is no true cuckold but calamity so beauty's a flower the lady bade take away the fool therefore i say again take her away sir i bade them take away you miss prison in the highest degree lady cuculus non faci monachum that is as much to say as i were not motley in my brain good madonna give me leave to prove you a fool can you do it dexterously good madonna make your proof i must catechise you for it madonna good my mouse of virtue answer me well sir for want of other idleness i'll bide your proof good madonna why mournest thou good fool for my brother's death i think his soul is in hell madonna i know his soul is in heaven fool the more fool madonna to mourn your brother's soul for being in heaven take away the fool gentlemen what think you of this fool malvolio doth he not mend yes and shall do till the pangs of death shake him infirmity 
that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool god send you sir a speedy infirmity for the better increase your folly sir toby would be sworn that i am no fox but he will not pass his word for two pence that you are no fool how say you to that malvolio i marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal i saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone look you now he's out of his guard already unless you laugh and minister occasion to him he is gagged i protest i take these wise men that crow so at these set kind of fools no better than the fool's zanies oh you are sick of self-love malvolio and taste with a distempered appetite to be generous guiltless and of free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets there is no slander in an allowed fool though he do nothing but rail nor no railing in a known discreet man though he do nothing but reprove now mercury endure thee with leasing for thou speakest well of fools re-enter maria madam there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you from the count orsino is it i know not madam tis a fair young man and well attended who of my people hold him in delay sir toby madam your kinsman fetch him off i pray you he speaks nothing but madman fie on him exit maria go you malvolio if it be a suit from the count i am sick or not at home what you will to dismiss it exit malvolio now you see sir how your fooling grows old and people dislike it thou hast spoke for us madonna as if thy eldest son should be a fool who skull jove cram with brains for here he comes one of thy kin has a most weak piemater enter sir toby belch by mine honour half drunk what is he at the gate cousin a gentleman a gentleman what gentleman tis a gentleman here <sighs> a plague of these pickle herring how now sought good sir toby cousin cousin how have you come so early by this lethargy lechery i defy lechery there's one at the gate ay marry what is he let him be the devil and he will i care not give me faith say i well it's all one exit <sighs> what's a drunken man like fool like a drowned man a fool and a madman one drought above heat makes him a fool the second mads him and the third drowns him go thou and seek the crowner and let him sit on my cause for he's in the third degree of drink he's drowned go look after him he is but mad yet madonna and the fool shall look to the madman exit re-enter malvolio madam yon young fellow swears he will speak with you i told him you were sick he takes on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you i told him you were asleep he seems to have a foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you what is to be said to him lady he is fortified against any denial tell him he shall not speak with me has been told so and he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench but he'll speak with you what kind of man is he why of mankind what manner of man of very ill manner he'll speak with you will you or no of what personage and years is he not yet old enough for a man nor young enough for a boy as a squash is before tis a peas corridora cooling when tis almost an apple tis with him in standing water between boy and man he is very well favoured and he speaks very shrewishly one would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him let him approach call in my gentlewoman gentlewoman my lady calls exit re-enter maria give me my veil come throw it o'er my face we'll once more hear orsino's embassy enter viola and attendants the honourable lady of the house which is she speak to me i shall answer for her your will most radiant exquisite and unmatchable beauty i pray you tell me if this be the lady of the house for i never saw her i would be loath to cast away my speech for besides that it is excellently well penned i have taken great pains to con it 
Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comptable, even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance if you be the lady of the house that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart. And yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain, if you are she, you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in't, I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and tis poetical. It is the more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates, and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber, I am to hull here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant, sweet lady. Tell me your mind, I am a messenger. Sure you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am, and what I would, are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears divinity, to any others profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Exeunt, Maria, and attendants. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good, madam. Let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir. Such a one I was this present. Is not well done. Unveiling. Excellently done. If God did all. Tis in grain, sir. Twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruellest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried and every particle and utensil labelled to my will, as item, two lips, indifferent red, Item, two grey eyes with lids to them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompensed, though you were crowned the nonpareil of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in dimension and the shape of nature a gracious person. But yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense, I would not understand it. 
Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again, to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed-post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart of flint that you shall love, and let your fervour like my master's be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. Exit. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well, I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Not too fast. Soft, soft. Unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague? Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio! Re-enter Malvolio. Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or not? Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way to-morrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hybe, Malvolio. Madam, I will. Exit. I do I know not what, and fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be. And be this so. Exit. End of Act One. Act Two of Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, The Sea Coast. Enter Antonio and Sebastian. Will you stay no longer? Nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you your leave, that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me know of you whither you are bound. No sooth, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me, then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I have called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Messalini, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended. But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, the day! A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. But, though I could not with such an estimable wonder, over far believe that. 
yet thus I will boldly publish her. She bore mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare you well at once, my bosom is full of kindness. And I am so near the manners of my mother that, upon the least occasion more, mine eyes will tell tales of me. I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. Exit. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee there. But, come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Exit. Scene two. A street. Enter Viola, Malvolio following. Would not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir? On a moderate pace I have since arrived, but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance. She will none of him. And one thing more, that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me. I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. Exit. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed so much that sure me thought her eyes had lost her tongue for she did speak in starts distractedly oh she loves me sure the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger none of my lord's ring why he sent her none i am the man oh if it be so as tis poor lady she were better love a dream disguise i see thou art a wickedness wherein the pregnant enemy does much how easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms alas our frailty is the cause not we for such as we are made of such we be how will this fadge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now, alas, the day, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? O oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Exit. Scene three. Olivia's house. Enter Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew. Approach Sir Andrew. Not to be abed after midnight is to be up betimes, and Deluculo Sergera, thou knowest. Nay, my troth, I know not, but I know to be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion, I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early, so that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our life consist of the four elements? Faith, so they say, but I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thou art a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Marian, I say, a stoop of wine. Enter, clown. Here comes the fool, Faith. 
How now, my hearts? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. Now, let's have a catch. By my troth, the fool has an excellent breast. I, I had rather than forty shillings I had such a leg and so sweet a breath to sing as the fool has. In sooth, thou wast in very gracious fooling last night when thou spokest of big regrobitus and of the vapians passing the equinoctial of Quibus. And it was very good, i' faith. I sent thee three sixpence for thy limon. Hadst it? I did impedicose thy gratility, for Malvolio's nose is no whipstock. My lady has a white hand, and the Myrmidons are no bottle ale houses. Excellent. Why, this is the best fooling when all is done. Now, a song. Come on, there is sixpence for you. Let's have a song. There's a test drill of me, too. If one night give a... Would you rather have a love song or a song of good life? A love song, a love song. Ah, I, I, I care not for good life. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming. That can sing both high and low trip. No further pretty sweeting. Journeys end in lovers meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Ha! Excellent good i' faith! Good, good. What is loved is not hereafter, present mirth hath present laughter, what's to come is still unsure, in delay there lies no plenty then. Come kiss me, sweet and twenty, youth's a stuff will not endure. A mellifluous voice as I am a true knight. A contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious, if faith. To hear by the nose it is dulcet in contagion. But shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch that will draw three souls out of one weaver? Shall we do that? And you love me, let's do it. I am a dog at a catch. By your lady, sir, some dogs will catch well. Most certain, let our catch be, thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave knight. I shall be constrained in to call thee knave knight. Tis not the first time I have constrained one to call me knave. Begin, fool. It begins, hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. Go to faith. <laughs> Come begin. Catch sung. Enter Mariah. What a caterwauling do you keep here? If my lady have not called upon her steward Malvolio, and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a Catayan, we are politicians, Malvolio's a Pegaramsey, and three merry men be we. Am not I consanguinous? Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley, lady. There dwelt a man in Babylon, lady, lady. Beshrew me, the knight's an admirable fooling. Why, he does well enough if he be disposed, and so do I, too. He, he does it with a better grace, but I do it more natural. Oh, the twelfth day of December. For the love of God, peace. Enter Malvolio. My masters, are you mad, or what are you? Have ye no wit, manners, no honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Do you make an alehouse of my lady's house, that ye squeak out your coziest catches, without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep time, sir, in our catches, sneck up. Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that, though she harbours you as her kinsman, she is nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanours, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show his days are almost done. Is it even so? But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much credit to you. 
Shall I bid him go? What and if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 you dare not. Out of tune, sir, ye lie. Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? Yes, by Saint Anne, and ginger shall be hot, eye the mouth, too. Thou art to the right. Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prized my lady's favour at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Exit. Go shake your ears. Twere as good a deed as to drink when a man's a-hungry, to challenge him the field, and then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for to-night. Since the youth of the Counts was to-day with thy lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gall him into a nay-word, and make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us, possess us, tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he is a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. What, for being a Puritan? Thy exquisite reason, dear knight? I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly, but a time-pleaser. An affectioned ass that cons state without book, and utters it by great swarths. The best persuaded of himself, so crammed, as he thinks, with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all that look on him love him, and on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein, by the colour of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter we can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent, I smell a device. I have did my nose, too. He shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece, and that she's in love with him. My purpose is, indeed, a horse of that colour. And your horse now would make him an ass. Ass, I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. I will plant you two, and let the fool make a third, where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night, to bed, and dream on the event. Farewell. Exit. Good night, Penthesilea. Before me she's a good wench. She's a beagle true-bred and one that adores me what of that i was adored once too let's to bed knight thou hadst need send for more money if i cannot recover your niece i am a foul way out send for money knight if thou hast her not to the end call me cut if i do not never trust me take it how you will come come i'll go burn some sack tis too late to go to bed now Come night, come night. Exeunt. Scene four. Duke Orsino's palace. Enter Duke Orsino, Viola, Curio, and others. Give me some music. Now, good morrow, friends. Now, good Cesario, but that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, methought it did relieve my passion much more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy paced times come but one verse he is not here so please your lord that should sing it who was it first day the jester my lord a fool that the lady olivia took much delight in he is about the house go seek him out and play the tune the while exit curio music plays come hither boy if ever thou shalt love in the sweet pangs of it remember me for such as i am all true lovers are unstayed and skittish in all motions else save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved how dost thy like this tune 
It gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favour that it loves. Hath it not, boy? Mm, a little, by your favour. What kind of woman is't? Of your complexion. <laughs> she is not worth thee, then. What years, he faith? About your years, my lord. Too old, by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself, so wears she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. For, boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn, than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower, being once displayed, doth fall that very hour. And so they are. Alas, that they are so. To die, even when they to perfection grow. Re-enter Curio and Clown. Oh, fellow, come, the song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario. It is old and plain, the spinsters and the knitters in the sun, and the free maids that weave their thread with bones, do use to chant it. It is silly, sooth, and dallies with the innocence of love, like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Aye, prithee, sing. Come away, come away, death. And in sad cypress let me be laid. Fly away, fly away, breath. I'm slain by a fair cruel maid. My shroud of white stuck all with you. Oh, prepare it. My part of death, no one so true did share it not a flower not a flower sweet on my black coffin let there be strown not a friend not a friend greet my poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown a thousand thousand sighs to say lay me oh where sad true lover never find my grave to weep there there's for thy pains no pain sir i take pleasure in singing sir i'll pay thy pleasure then Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy god protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea, that their business might be every thing, and their intent everywhere, for that sit that always makes a good voyage of nothing. Farewell. Exit. Let all the rest give place. Curio and attendants retire. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her, I hold as giddily as fortune. But tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in attracts my soul but if she cannot love you sir i cannot be so answered sooth but you must <sighs> say that some lady as perhaps there is hath for your love a great a pang of heart as you have for olivia you cannot love her you tell her so must she not then be answered there is no woman's sides can buy the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart no woman's heart so big to hold so much 
they lack retention alas their love may be called appetite no motion of the liver but the palate that suffer surfeit cloyment and revolt but mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that i owe olivia ay but i know what dost thou know too well what love women to men may owe in faith they are as true of heart as we my father had a daughter loved a man as it might be perhaps were i a woman i should your lordship and what's her history a blank my lord she never told her love but let concealment like a worm o the bud feed on her damask cheek she pined in thought and with a green and yellow melancholy she sat like patience on a monument smiling at grief was not this love indeed we men may say more swear more but indeed our shows are more than will for still we prove much in our vows but little in our love but died thy sister of her love my boy i am all the daughters of my father's house and all the brothers too and yet i know not sir shall i to this lady ay that's the theme to her in haste give her this jewel say my love can give no place bide no dinay exeunt scene five olivia's garden enter sir toby belch sir andrew and fabian come thy way signor fabian nay i'll come if i lose a scruple of this sport let me be boiled to death of melancholy wouldst thou not be glad to have the niggardly rascally sheep-biter come by some notable shame i would exult man you know he brought me out of favour with my lady about a bear baiting here to anger him we'll have the bear again and we will fool him black and blue shall we not sir andrew and we do not it is pity of our lives here comes the little villain how now my metal of india enter maria get ye all three into the box tree malvolio's coming down this walk he has been yonder in the sun practising behaviour to his own shadow this half hour observe him for the love of mockery for i know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him close in the name of jesting lie thou there throws down a letter for here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling exit enter malvolio tis but fortune all is fortune maria once told me she did affect me and i have heard herself come thus near that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion besides she uses me with a more exalted respect than any one else that follows her what should i think on t here's an overweening rogue oh peace contemplation makes a rare turkey-cock of him how he jets under his advanced plumes slight i could so beat the rogue peace i say to be count malvolio ah rogue pistol him pistol him peace peace there is example for it the lady of the stracci married the yeoman of the wardrobe fie on him jezebel oh peace now he's deeply in look how imagination blows him having been three months married to her sitting in my state oh for a stone bow to hit him in the eye calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown having come from a day-bed where i have left olivia sleeping fire and brimstone oh peace peace and then to have the humour of state and after a demure travel of regard telling them i know my place as i would that they should do theirs too for my kinsman toby bolts and shackles oh peace 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 now now seven of my people with an obedient start make out for him i frown the while 
and perchance wind up watch, or play with my some rich jewel. Toby approaches, courtesies there to me. Shall this fellow live? Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does not Toby take you a blow of the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab. Nay, patience, or we break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. <laughs> That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. I knew twas I, for many do call me fool. What employment have we here? Taking up the letter. Now is the woodcock near the gin. Oh, peace. And the spirit of humour intimate reading aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very C's, her U's, and her T's. And thus makes she her great P's. It is, in contempt of question, her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's. Why that? Reads. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. By your leave, wax, soft, and the impressure, her lucrese, which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. To whom should this be? This wins him liver and all. Reads. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know what follows. The number's altered. No man must know. If this should be thee, Malvolio. Marry, hang thee, Brock. Reads. I may command where I adore, but silence like a lucrezy knife with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M O A I doth sway my life. A fustian riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M O A I doth sway my life. Nay, but first let me see, let me see, let me see. What a dish of poison she has dressed him. And with what wing the staniel checks at it. I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me, I serve her, she is my lady. Why, this is evident to any formal capacity, there is no obstruction in this, and the end. What should that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me. Softly, M-O-A-I. Oh, I make up that. He is now at a cold scent. Sodder will cry upon for all this, though it be rank as a fox. M? Malvolio. M? Why, that begins my name. Did I not say he would work it out? The cur is excellent at faults. M? But then there is no consonancy in the sequel. That suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. Ay, or I'll cudgel him and make him cry O. And then I comes behind. Ay, and you had an eye behind you, you might see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. M-O-A-I. This simulation is not as the former, and yet, to crush this a little, it would bow to me, for every one of these letters are in my name. Soft, here follows prose. Reads. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands. Let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough, and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings, and wish to see thee ever cross-garted. I say remember. Go to, thou art made, 
if thou desirest to be so if not let me see thee a steward still the fellow of servants and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers farewell she that would alter services with thee the fortunate unhappy daylight and champagne discovers not more this is open i will be proud i will read politic authors i will baffle sir toby i will wash off gross acquaintance i will be point devise the very man i do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me for every reason excites to this that my lady loves me she did commend my yellow stockings of late she did praise my leg being cross-gartered and in this she manifests herself to my love and with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking i thank my stars i am happy i will be strange stout in yellow stockings and cross-gartered even with the swiftness of putting on jove and my stars be praised here is yet a postscript thou canst not choose but know who i am if thou entertainest my love let it appear in thy smiling thy smiles become thee well therefore in my presence still smile dear my sweet i prithee jove i thank thee i will smile i will do everything that thou wilt have me exit i would not give my part of this sport for a pension of thousands to be paid from the sophie i could marry this wench for this device so could i too <laughs> and ask no other dowry with her but such another jest nor i neither here comes my noble dull catcher re-enter maria wilt thou set thy foot on my neck or or mine either shall i play my freedom at tray trip and become thy bond slave in faith or, or, or i either why thou hast put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him he must run mad nay but say true does it work upon him like aqua vitae with a midwife if you will then see the fruits of the sport mark his first approach before my lady he will come to her in yellow stockings and tis a colour she abhors and cross garded a fashion she detests and he will smile upon her which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition being addicted to a melancholy as she is that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt if you will see it follow me to the gates of tartar thou most excellent devil of wit i'll make one too exeunt end of act two act three of twelfth night by william shakespeare this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, Olivia's Garden. Enter Viola and Clown with a tabor. Save thee, friend, and thy music. Dost thou live by thy tabor? No, sir, I live by the church. Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. So thou mayest say the king lies by a beggar if a beggar dwell near him, or the church stands by thy tabor if thy tabor stand by the church. You have said, sir, to see this age a sentence is but a cheveral glove to a good wit, how quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Nay, that's certain. They that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would. Therefore my sister had had no name, sir. Why, man? Why, sir, her name's a word, and to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. But indeed words are very rascals since bonds disgrace them. Thy reason, man? Troth, sir, I can yield you none without words, and words are grown so false I am loath to prove reason with them. I warrant thou art a merry fellow and carest for nothing. Not so, sir, I do care for something, but in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, sir, I would it would make you invisible. Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? No. Indeed, sir, the Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. And fools are as like husbands as pilchards are to herrings. The husband's the bigger. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. I saw thee late at the Count Orsino's. 
Foolery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but the fool should be as oft with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, an thou pass upon me, I'll no more with thee. Hold. There's expenses for thee. Now, Jove, in his next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee. I am almost sick for one. Aside. Though I would not have it grow on my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bread, sir? Yes, being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia, sir, to bring a Cressida to this Trollius. I understand you, sir. Tis well begged. The matter, I hope, is not great, sir, begging but a beggar. Cressida was a beggar. My lady is within, sir. I will construe to them whence you come, who you are, and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. Exit. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of wit. He must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of persons and the time, and like the haggard check at every feather that comes before his eye. This is a practice as full of labour as a wise man's art, for folly that he wisely shows is fit. But wise men, folly fallen, quite taint their wit. Enter Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir? Dieu vous garde, monsieur. Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. I hope, sir, you are, and I am yours. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean she is the list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir. Put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will answer you with gate and entrance. Oh, but we are prevented. Enter Olivia and Maria. Most excellent and accomplished lady, the heavens rain odours on you. That youth so rare, courtier. Rare odours? <laughs> well. My matter hath no voice to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odours? Pregnant and vouchsafed? I'll get them all three already. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Exeunt, Sir Toby Belch, Sir Andrew, and Maria. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir? Twas never merry world since lowly feigning was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino, youth. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him I think not on him. For his thoughts would they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to whet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you, I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady, give me leave, beseech you. I did send, after the last enchantments you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So I did abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you. Under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you, in a shameful cunning which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honour at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tyrannous heart can think? To one of your receiving enough is shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hideth my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not a grise. For tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Why, then, methinks tis time to smile again. O oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud! If one should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf! Clock strikes. The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Then westward ho. 
Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing, madam, to my lord by me? Stay. I prithee. Tell me what thou think'st of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip! A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honour, truth, and everything, I love thee so that, maugre all thy pride, nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought better. By innocence I swear, and by my youth I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has. Nor never none shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so adieu, good madam, never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayst move that heart which now abhors to like his love. Exeunt. Scene two. Olivia's house. Enter Sir Toby Belch, Sir Andrew, and Fabian. No, Faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Marry, I saw your niece do more favours to the Count's serving-man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. Slight! Will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. And they have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. She did show favour to the youth in your sight only to exasperate you, to awake your dormouse valour, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should have then accosted her, and with some excellent jests, fire new from the mint, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, and this was balked. Double guilt of this opportunity you let time wash off, and you are now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard, unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt either of valour or policy. And be anyway it must be with valour, for policy I hate, and had as lief be a brownest as a politician. Why then, build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valour. Challenge me, the Count's youth, to fight with him, hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall take note of it, and assure thyself there is no love-broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valour. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and full of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. If thou thouest him some thrice, it shall not be amiss and as many lies as will lie in thy sheet of paper, although the sheet were big enough for the bed of ware in England, set em down. Go, about it. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen. No matter. About it. Where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the cubiculo. Go. Exit Sir Andrew. This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, lad, some two thousand strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. Never trust me, then, and by all means stir on the youth to an answer. I think oxen and wain-ropes cannot hail them together, for Andrew, if he were opened, and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. And his opposite, the youth, bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. Enter Mariah. Look where the youngest wren of nine comes. If you desire the spleen, and will laugh yourself into stitches, follow me. Yond Gaul Malvolio is turned heathen, a very renegado, for there is no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly, can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. 
he's in yellow stockings and cross-gartered most villainously like a pedant that keeps a school in the church i have dogged him like his murderer he does obey every point of the letter that i drop to betray him he does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map with the augmentation of the indies you have not seen such a thing as tis i can hardly forbear hurling things at him i know my lady will strike him if she do he'll smile and take it for a great favour come bring us bring us where he is exeunt scene three a street enter sebastian and antonio i would not by my will have troubled you but since you make your pleasure of your pains i will no further chide you i could not stay behind you my desire more sharp than filed steel did spur me forth and not all love to see you though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage but jealousy would might befall your travel being skilless in these parts which to a stranger unguided and unfriended often prove rough and unhospitable my willing love the rather by these arguments of fear set forth in your pursuit my kind antonio i can no other answer make but thanks and thanks and ever thanks too oft good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay but were my worth as is my conscience firm you should find better dealing what's to do shall we see the relics of this town to-morrow sir best first go see your lodging i am not weary and tis long to-night i pray you let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame that do renown this city would you pardon me i do not without danger walk these streets once in a sea-fight against the countess galleys i did some service of such note indeed that were i tain here it would scarce be answered belike you slew great number of his people the offence is not of such a bloody nature albeit the quality of the time and quarrel might well have given us bloody argument it might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them which for traffic's sake most of our city did only myself stood out for which if i be lapsed in this place i shall pay dear do not walk then to open it doth not fit me hold sir here's my purse in the south suburbs said the elephant is best to lodge i will bespeak out i it whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town there shall you have me why are your purse haply your eyes shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase and your store i think is not for idle market sir i'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour to the elephant i do remember exeunt scene four olivia's garden enter olivia and maria i have sent after him he says he'll come how shall i feast him what bestow of him for youth is bought more oft than begged or borrowed i speak too loud where is malvolio he is sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortunes where is malvolio he's coming madam but in a very strange manner he is sure possessed madam why what's the matter does he rave no madam he does nothing but smile your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if he come for sure the man is tainted in's wits go call him hither exit maria i am as mad as he if sad and merry madness equal be re-enter maria with malvolio how now malvolio sweet lady ho ho smilest thou i sent for thee upon a sad occasion sad lady i could be sad this does make some obstruction in the blood this cross gartering but what of that if it please the eye of one it is with me as the very true sonnet is please one and please all why how dost thou man what is the matter with thee not black in my mind though yellow in my legs it did come to his hands and commands shall be executed i think we do know the sweet roman hand wilt thou go to bed malvolio to bed ay sweetheart and i'll come to thee god comfort thee why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so oft how do you malvolio at your request yes nightingale's answer doors 
why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady be not afraid of greatness twas well writ what meanst thou by that malvolio some are born great ha huh. some achieve greatness what sayest thou and some have greatness thrust upon them heaven restore thee remember who commended thy yellow stockings thy yellow stockings and wish to see thee cross-gartered cross-gartered go to thou art made if thou desirest to be so am i made if not let me see thee a servant still why this is very midsummer madness enter servant madam the young gentleman of the court orsinos is returned i could hardly entreat him back he attends your ladyship's pleasure i'll come to him exit servant good maria let this fellow be looked to where's my cousin toby let some of my people have a special care of him i would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry exeunt olivia and maria aha uh -huh. do you come near me now no worse man than sir toby to look to me this concurs directly with the letter she sends him on purpose that i may appear stubborn to him for she incites me to that in the letter cast thy humble sloth she says be opposite with a kinsman surly with servants let thy tongue tang with arguments of state put thyself into the trick of singularity and consequently sets down the manner how as a sad face a reverend carriage a slow tongue in the habit of some sir of note and so forth i have limed her but it is jove's doing and jove make me thankful and when she went away now let this fellow be looked to fellow not malvolio nor after my degree but fellow why everything adheres together that no dram of a scruple no scruple of a scruple no obstacle no incredulous or unsafe circumstance <sighs> what can be said nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes well jove not i is the doer of this and he is to be thanked re-enter maria with sir toby belch and fabian which way is he in the name of sanctity if all the devils of hell be drawn in little and legion himself possessed him yet i'll speak to him here he is here he is how is't with you sir how is't with you man go off i discard you let me enjoy my private go off lo how hollow the fiend speaks within him did not i tell you sir toby my lady prays you to have a care of him aha uh -huh. does she so go to go to peace peace we must deal gently with him let me alone how do you do malvolio how is it with you what man defy the devil consider he's an enemy to mankind do you know what you say la you and you speak ill of the devil how he takes it at heart pray god he be not bewitched carry his water to the wise woman marry and it shall be done to-morrow morning if i live my lady would not lose him for more than i'll say how now mistress o oh, lord prithee hold thy peace this is not the way do you not see you move him let me alone with him no way but gentleness gently gently the fiend is rough and will not be roughly used why how now my barcock how dost thou chuck sir i bid he come with me what man tis not for gravity to play at cherry pit with satan hang him foul collier get him to say his prayers good sir toby get him to pray my prayers minx no i warrant you he will not hear of godliness go hang yourselves all you are idle shallow things i am not of your element you shall know more hereafter exit <laughs> is it possible if this were played upon a stage now i could condemn it in probable fiction his very genius hath taken the infection of the device man nay pursue him now lest the device take air and taint Why? we shall make him mad indeed the house will be the quieter come we'll have him in a dark room and bound my niece is already in the belief that he's mad we may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance 
till our very pastime tired out of breath prompt us to have mercy on him at which time we will bring the device to the bar and crown thee for a finder of madmen but see but see enter sir andrew more matter for a may morning here's the challenge read it warrant there's vinegar and pepper in't is so saucy by this i warrant him do but read give me reads youth whatsoever thou art thou art but a scurvy fellow good and valiant wonder not nor admire not in thy mind why i do call thee so for i will show thee no reason for it a good note that keeps you from the blow of the law thou comest to the lady olivia and in my sight she uses thee kindly but thou liest in thy throat that is not the matter i challenge thee for very brief into exceeding good sense less i will waylay thee going home where if it be thy chance to kill me good thou killest me like a rogue and a villain still you keep at the windy side of the law good fare thee well and god have mercy upon one of our souls he may have mercy upon mine but my hope is better and so look to thyself thy friend as thou usest him and thy sworn enemy andrew aguecheek if this letter move him not his legs cannot i'll give it him you may have very fit occasion for it he is now in some commerce with my lady and will by and by depart go sir andrew scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum bailey so soon as ever thou seest him draw and as thou drawest swear horrible for it comes to pass oft that a terrible oath with a swaggering accent sharply twanged off gives manhood more approbation than ever proof itself would have earned him away oh nay let me alone for swearing exit now will i not deliver his letter for the behaviour of the young gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding his employment between his lord and my niece confirms no less and therefore this letter being so excellently ignorant will breed no terror in the youth he will find it comes from a clodpole but sir i will deliver his challenge by word of mouth set upon aguecheek a notable report of valour and drive the gentleman as i know his youth will aptly receive it into a most hideous opinion of his rage skill fury and impetuosity this will so fright them both that they will kill one another by the look like cockatrices re-enter olivia with viola here he comes with your niece give them way till he take leave and presently after him i will meditate the while upon some horrid message for a challenge exeunt sir toby belch fabian and maria i have said too much unto a heart of stone and laid mine honour too unchary out there's something in me that reproves my fault but such a headstrong potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof with the same haviour that your passion bears goes on my master's grief here wear this jewel for me tis my picture refuse it not it hath no tongue to vex you and i beseech you come again to-morrow what shall you ask of me that i'll deny that honour saved may upon asking give nothing but this your true love for my master how with mine honour may i give him that which i have given to you i will acquit you well come again to-morrow fare thee well a fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell exit re-enter sir toby belch and fabian gentlemen god save thee and you sir that defence thou hast betake thee to it of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him i know not but thy interceptor full of despite bloody as the hunter attends thee at the orchard end dismount thy tuck be yer in thy preparation for thy assailant is quick skilful and deadly you mistake sir i am sure no man hath any quarrel to me my remembrance is very free and clear from any image of offence done to any man you'll find it otherwise i assure you therefore if you hold your life at any price betake you to your guard for your opposite hath in him what youth strength skill and wrath can furnish man withal 
I pray you, sir, what is he? He is knight, dubbed with unhatched rapier and uncarpet consideration, but he is a devil in private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three, and his incensement at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. Hobnob is his word. Give it or take it. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valour. Belike this is a man of that quirk. Sir, no, his indignation derives itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore get you on and give him his desire. Back you shall not to the house unless you undertake that with me, which with as much safety you might answer him. Therefore on, or strip your sword stark naked, for meddle you must, that's certain, or forswear to wear iron about you. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the knight what my offence to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Signor Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. Exit. Pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, what manner of man is he? Nothing of that wonderful promise to read him by his form, as you were like to find him in the proof of his valour. He is indeed, sir, the most skilful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could have possibly found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that hath rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my mettle. Exeunt. Re-enter Sir Toby Belch with Sir Andrew. Why, man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a farrago. I had a pass with him, rapier, scabbard, and all, and he gives me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. And on the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet hit the ground they step on. They say he has been fencer to the Sophie. P Pox on it, I have not meddled with him. Ay, but he will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Plague on! And I thought he had been valiant in so cunning in fence, I'd have seen him damned ere I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse, Grey Capulet. I'll make the motion. Stand here. Make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Aside. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. Re-enter Fabian and Viola. To Fabian. I have his horse to take up the quarrel. I have persuaded him the youth's a devil. He is as horribly conceited of him, and pants and looks pale, as if a bear were at his heels. To Viola. There's no remedy, sir. He will fight you for his oath's sake. Marry, he hath better bethought him of his quarrel, and he finds that now scarce to be worth talking of. Therefore draw for the supportance of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Aside. Oh, pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honour's sake, have one bout with you. He cannot by the duello avoid it. But he has promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, to it. Oh, pray God he keep his oath. I do assure you, tis against my will. They draw. Enter Antonio. Put up your sword. If this young gentleman have done offence, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. You, sir? Why, what are you? One, sir, that for his love dares yet do more than you have heard him brag to you, he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. They draw. Enter officers. O oh, good Sir Toby, hold. Here come the officers. I'll be with you anon. Pray, sir, put up your sword, if you please. Oh, marry will I, sir, and for that I promised you. I'll be as good as my word. He will bear you easily, and reigns well. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir, not jot. I know your favour well, though now you have no sea-cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. 
i must obey to viola this comes with seeking you but there's no remedy i shall answer it what will you do now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse it grieves me much more for what i cannot do for you than what befalls myself you stand amazed but be of comfort come sir away i must entreat of you some of that money what money sir for the fair kindness you have showed me here and part being prompted by your present trouble out of my lean and low ability i'll lend you something my having is not much i'll make division of my present with you hold there's half my coffer will you deny me now is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion do not tempt my misery lest that it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that i have done for you i know of none nor know i you by voice or any feature i hate ingratitude more in a man than lying vainness babbling drunkenness or any taint of vice whose strong corruption inhabits our frail blood o oh, heavens themselves come sir i pray you go let me speak a little this youth that you see here i snatched one half out of the jaws of death relieved him with such sanctity of love and to his image which methought did promise most venerable worth did i devotion what's that to us time goes by away but oh how vile an idol proves this god thou hast sebastian done good features shame a nature has no blemish but the mind none can be called deformed but the unkind virtue is beauty but the beauteous evil are empty trunks or flourished by the devil the man grows mad away with him come come sir lead me on exit with officers methinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself so do not i prove true imagination o oh, prove true that i dear brother be now ta'en for you come hither knight come hither fabian we'll whisper o'er a couplet or two of most sage saws he named sebastian i my brother know yet living in my glass even such and so in favour was my brother and he went still in this fashion colour ornament for him i imitate o oh, if it prove tempests are kind and salt waves fresh in love exit a very dishonest paltry boy and more a coward than a hare his dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him and for his cowardship ask fabian a coward a most devout coward religious in it ah slid i'll after him and beat him do cuff him soundly but never draw thy sword and i do not come let's see the event i dare lay any money twill be nothing yet exeunt end of act three act four of twelfth night by william shakespeare this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One. Before Olivia's House. Enter Sebastian and Clown. Will you make me believe that I am not sent for you? Go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well held out, I faith. No, I do not know you, nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario nor this is not my nose neither nothing that is so is so i prithee vent thy folly is somewhere else thou knowst not me vent my folly he has heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool vent my folly i am afraid this great lubber of the world will prove a cockney i prithee now ungrid thy strangeness and tell me what i shall vent to my lady shall i vent to her that thou art coming i prithee foolish greek depart from me there's money for thee if thou tarry longer i shall give worse payment by my troth thou hast an open hand these wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report after fourteen years purchase enter sir andrew sir toby belch and fabian 
Now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you. Why, there's for thee, and there, and there. Are all the people mad? Hold, sir, or I'll throw your dagger o'er the house. This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. Exit. Come on, sir, hold. Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him if there be any law in Illyria. Though I, I struck him first, yet it's no matter for that. Let go thy hand. Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your iron. You are well fleshed. Come on. I will be free from thee. What wouldst thou now? If thou dost tempt me further, draw thy sword. What, what? Nay, then I must have an ounce or two of this malapert blood from you. Enter Olivia. Hold, Toby. On thy life I charge thee, hold. Madam. Will it be ever thus? Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves where manners ne'er were preached, out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesario. Rudesby, be gone. Exeunt, Sir Toby Belch, Sir Andrew, and Fabian. I prithee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passions, sway in this uncivil and thou unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house, and hear thou there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that thou thereby mayst smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny. Beshrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee. What relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or am I mad, or else this is a dream? Let fancy still my sense in this leth sleep. If it be thus a dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee. Would thou'dst be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so, and so be. Exeunt. Scene two. Olivia's house. Enter Maria and Clown. Nay, I prithee, put on this gown in this beard. Make him believe thou art Sir Topas the curate. Do it quickly. I'll call Sir Toby the whilst. Exit. Well, I'll put it on, and I will dissemble myself in it. And I would I were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. I am not tall enough to become the function well, nor lean enough to be thought a good student. But to be said, an honest man and a good housekeeper goes as fairly as to say a careful man and a great scholar. The competitors enter. Enter Sir Toby Belch and Maria. Jove bless thee, Master Parson. Bonos dias, Sir Toby. For as the old hermit of Prague, that never saw pen and ink, very wittily said to a niece of King Gorboduc, that, that, is, is. So I, being Master Parsons, am Master Parsons. For what is that but that? And is but is to him sir topaz what ho oh, i say peace in the prison the knave counterfeits well a good knave within who calls there sir topaz the curate who come to visit malvolio the lunatic sir topaz sir topaz good sir topaz go to my lady out hyperbolic fiend how vexed thou this man talkest thou nothing but of ladies well said master parson Sir Topas, never was man thus wronged. Good Sir Topas, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fie, thou dishonest Satan! I call thee by the most modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones that will use the devil himself with courtesy. Say so that house is dark. As hell, Sir Topas. Why, it hath bay windows transparent as barricados, and the clear stones towards the south-north are as lustrous as ebony. And yet complainest thou of obstruction? I am not mad, Sir Topas. I say to you, this house is dark. Madman, thou errest. I say there is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. I say, this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell, and I say, there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it, in any constant question. What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wild fowl? That the soul of our grandam might haply inhabit a bird. What thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul, and in no way approve his opinion. 
Fare thee well, remain thou still in darkness. Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, ere I will allow of thy wits, and fear to kill a woodstock, lest thou disposest the soul of thy grandam. Fare thee well. Sir Topas, Sir Topas. My most exquisite Sir Topas. Nay, I am for all waters. Thou mightest have done this without thy beard and gown. He sees thee not. To him in thine own voice, and bring me word how thou findest him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. If he may be conveniently delivered, I would he were, for I am now so far in offence with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety this sport to the upshot. Come, by and by, to my chamber. Exeunt, Sir Toby Belch and Maria. Hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Fool. My lady is unkind, purdy. Fool. Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say. She loves another. Who calls her? Good fool, as ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? Ay, good fool. Alas, sir, how fell you besides your five wits? Fool, there was never a man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well? Then you are mad indeed, if you be no better in your wits than a fool. They have here propertied me. Keep me in darkness. Send ministers to me, asses. And do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise you what you say, the minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavour thyself to sleep, and leave thy vain bibble-babble. Sir Topas. Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who, I, sir? Not I, sir. God be with you, good Sir Topaz. Mary, amen. I will, sir, I will. Fool, 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 I say. Alas, sir, be patient. What say you, sir? I am shent for speaking to you. Good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am. Good fool, some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it. But tell me true, are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll ne'er believe a madman till I see his brains. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Fool, I'll requite it in the highest degree. I pray thee be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again, In a trice like to the old vice your need to sustain. Who with dagger of laugh in his rage, And his wrath cries a heart of the devil. Like a mad lad, pare thy nails, dad, Adieu, good man, devil. Exit. Scene three. Olivia's garden. Enter Sebastian. This is the air, that is the glorious sun, the pearl she gave me. I do feel it and see it, and though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant. Yet there he was, and there I found this credit, that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense, That this may be some error, but no madness, Yet doth this accident and flood of fortune So far exceed all instance, all discourse, That I am ready to distrust mine eyes, And wrangle with my reason, That persuades me to any other trust But that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. Yet if twas so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs and dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes. Enter Olivia and priest. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, now go with me, and with this holy man into the chantry by. There, before him, and underneath the consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith, 
that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it, whilst you are willing it shall come to note, what time we will our celebration keep, according to my birth. What do you say? I'll follow this good man, and go with you, and having sworn truth, ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine, that they may fairly note this act of mine. Exeunt. End of Act 4《5 of Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare》This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act 5, Scene 1, Before Olivia's House Enter Clown and Fabian. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. This is to give a dog, and in recompense desire my dog again. Enter Duke Orsino, Viola, Curio, and Lords. Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends? I, sir, we are some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes, and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly I am an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused, so that conclusions to be as kisses, if your four negatives make your two affirmatives, why then, the worse for my friends and the better for my foes. <laughs> why, this is excellent. By my troth, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. Thou shalt not be worse for me. There's gold. But that it would be double dealing, sir. I would you could make it another. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once, and let your flesh and blood obey it. Well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. Primo, secundo, tartillo is a good play, and the old saying is, the third pays for all. The triplex, sir, is a good tripping measure, or the bells of St. Bennet, sir, may put you in mind one, two, three. You can fool no more money out of me at this throw, if you will let your lady know I am here to speak with her, and bring her along with you. It may awake my bounty further. Marry, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you think that my desire of having is the sin of covetousness. But as you say, sir... Let your bounty take a nap. I will awake it anon. Exit. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. Enter Antonio and officers. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. A bobbling vessel was he captain of, for shallow draught and bulk unprizable. With which such scathful grapple did he make with the most noble bottom of our fleet, that very envy and the tongue of loss cried fame and honour on him. What's the matter? Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraught from Candy, and this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private brabble did we apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what twas but distraction. Notable pirate, thou salt-water thief! What foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir! Be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, from the rude seas and raged and foamy mouth did I redeem. A wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did thereto add my love, without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake did I expose myself, 
pure for his love into the danger of this adverse town drew to defend him when he was beset where being apprehended his false cunning not meaning to partake with me in danger taught him to face me out of his acquaintance and grew a twenty years removed thing while one would wink denied me my own purse which i had recommended to his use not half an hour before how can this be when came he to this town to-day my lord and for three months before no interim not a minute's vacancy both day and night did we keep company enter olivia and attendants here comes the countess no heaven walks on earth but for thee fellow fellow thy words are madness three months this youth hath tended upon me but more of that anon take him aside what would my lord but that he may not have wherein olivia may seem serviceable cesario you do not keep promise with me madam gracious olivia what do you say cesario good my lord my lord would speak my duty hushes me if it be aught to the old tune my lord it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music still so cruel still so constant lord what to perverseness you uncivil lady to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul the faithfullest offerings hath breathed out that e'er devotion tendered what shall i do even what it please my lord that shall become him why should i not had i the heart to do it like to the egyptian thief at point of death kill what i love a savage jealousy that sometimes savours nobly but hear me this since you to non-regardance cast my faith and that i partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favour live you the marble-breasted tyrant still but this your minion whom i know you love and whom by heaven i swear i tender dearly him will i tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite come boy with me thy thoughts are ripe in mischief oh sacrifice the lamb that i do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove and i most jocund apt and willingly to do you rest a thousand deaths would die where goes cesario after him i love more than i love these eyes more than my life more by all mores than e'er i shall love wife if i do feign you witnesses above punish my life for tainting of my love ay me detested how am i beguiled who does beguile you who does you wrong hast thou forgot thyself is it so long call forth the holy father come away whither my lord cesario husband stay husband ay husband can he that deny a husband sirrah no my lord not i alas it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety fear not cesario take thy fortunes up be that thou knowest thou art and then thou art as great as that thou fearst enter priest o oh, welcome father father i charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold though lately we intended to keep in darkness what occasion now reveals before tis ripe what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me a contract of eternal bond of love confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands attested by the holy close of lips strengthened by interchangement of your rings and all the ceremony of this compact sealed in my function by my testimony since when my watch hath told me toward my grave i have travelled but two hours o oh, thou dissembling cub what wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case or will not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow farewell and take her but direct thy feet where thou and i henceforth may never meet my lord i do protest oh do not swear hold little faith though thou hast too much fear enter sir andrew for the love of god a surgeon send one presently to sir toby what's the matter 
he has broke my head across and has given sir toby a bloody coxcomb too for the love of god your help oh, i had rather forty pound i were at home who has done this sir andrew the count's gentleman one cesario we took him for a coward but he's the very devil incarnate my gentleman cesario odds lifelings there he is you broke my head for nothing and that that i did i was set on to do it by sir toby why do you speak to me i never hurt you you drew your sword upon me without cause but i bespoke you fair and hurt you not oh, well, if a bloody coxcomb be a hurt you've hurt me I, I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb enter sir toby belch and clown here comes sir toby holding you shall hear more but if he had not been in drink he would have tickled you on the gates that he did oh no gentlemen how is't with you that's all one has hurt me and there's the end on it sot didst see dick's surgeon sot oh he's drunk sir toby an hour agone his eyes were set at eight i the morning then he's a rogue and a passy measures pavin i hate a drunken rogue away with him who hath made this havoc with them i'll help you sir toby because we'll be dressed together will you help an ass-head and a coxcomb and a knave a thin-faced knave a gull get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to exeunt clown fabian sir toby belch and sir andrew enter sebastian i am sorry madam i have hurt your kinsman but had it been the brother of my blood i must have done no less by wit and safety you throw a strange regard upon me and by that i do perceive it hath offended you pardon me sweet one even for the vows we made each other but so late ago one face one voice one habit and two persons a natural perspective that is and is not antonio oh my dear antonio how have the hours racked and tortured me since i have lost thee sebastian are you fearest thou that antonio how have you made division of yourself an apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures which is sebastian most wonderful do i stand there i never had a brother nor can there be in that deity of my nature of here and everywhere i had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured of charity what kin are you to me what countryman what name what parentage of messaline sebastian was my father such a sebastian was my brother too so went he suited to his watery tomb if spirits can assume both form and suit you come to fright us a spirit i am indeed but am in that dimension grossly clad which from the womb i did participate were you a woman as the rest goes even i should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say thrice welcome drowned viola my father had a mole upon his brow and so had mine and dined that day when viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years oh that record is lively in my soul he finished indeed his mortal act that day that made my sister thirteen years if nothing lets to make us happy both but this my masculine usurped attire do not embrace me till each circumstance of place time fortune do cohere and jump that i am viola which to confirm i'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden weeds by whose gentle help i was preserved to serve this noble count all the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lady and this lord to olivia so comes it lady you have been mistook but nature to her bias drew in that you would have been contracted to a maid nor are you therein by my life deceived you are betrothed both to a maid and man 
Be not amazed, right noble is his blood, if this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. To Viola. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and those swearings keep as true in soul as doth that orbed continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He, upon some action, is now in durance at Malvolio's suit, a gentleman and follower of my lady's. He shall enlarge him. Fetch Malvolio hither. And yet, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distract. Re-enter Clown with a letter and fabian a most extracting frenzy of mine own from my remembrance clearly banished his how does he sirrah truly madam he holds beelzebub at the staff's end as well as any man in his case may do has here writ a letter to you i should have given to you to-day morning but as a madman's epistles are no gospel so it skills not much when they are delivered open it and read it look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman <clears throat> by the lord madam how now art thou mad no madam i do but read madness and your ladyship will have it as it ought to be you must allow vox prithee read i thy right wits so i do madonna but to read his right wits is to read thus therefore prepend my princess and give ear to fabian read it you sirrah by the lord madam you wrong me and the world shall know it though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me Yet I have the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury, the madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? I, madame. This savours not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian. Bring him hither. Exit Fabian. My lord, so please you. These things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as a wife. One day shall crown the alliance on it, so please you, here at my house, and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. To Viola. Your master quits you, and for your service done him, so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, and since you called me master for so long, here is my hand you shall from this time be your master's mistress a sister you are she re-enter fabian with malvolio is this the madman ay my lord this same how now malvolio madam you have done me wrong notorious wrong have i malvolio no lady you have pray you peruse that letter you must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or phrase, or say tis not your seal nor your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then, and tell me, in the modesty of honour, why you have given me such clear lights of favour, bade me come smiling and cross garted to you, to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people, and acting this in an obedient hope why you have suffered me to be imprisoned kept in a dark house visited by the priest and made the most notorious geck and gull that e'er invention played on tell me why alas malvolio this is not my writing though i confess much like the character but out of question tis maria's hand and now i do bethink me it was she first told me thou wast mad, then camest in smiling, and in such forms which here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. Prithee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak, and let no quarrel, no nor no brawl to come, taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. In hope it shall not. Most freely I confess, myself and Toby, 
set this device against Malvolio here, upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Maria writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he hath married her. How, with a sportful malice it was followed, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge, if that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool! How have they baffled thee? Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude, one Sir Topaz, sir. But that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember? Madame, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you smile not. He's gagged. And thus the whirligig of time brings in his revenges. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. Exit. He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him, and entreat him to a peace. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known, and golden time convince, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come, for so you shall be, while you are a man, but when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress, and his fancy's queen. Exeunt all, except clown. When that I was and a little tiny boy, with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came to man's estate, with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, gainst knave and thieves men shut their gates, for the rain it raineth every day but when i came alas to wife with hey ho the wind and the rain by swaggering could i never thrive for the rain it raineth every day but when i came unto my beds with hey ho the wind and the rain with toss-pots still had drunken heads for the rain it raineth every day a great while ago the world begun with hey ho the wind and the rain but that's all one our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. Exit. End of Act Five. End of Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare.